so uh, we are uh, auxiliary projections right so i'm just going to alter one of the questions which is already uh, given to you as assignment so this is a <clears throat> simple uh, object wherein you are given the details like this right now in this case uh, let us say uh, you are uh, required to make the uh, sorry let me just fill it up and this is solid and uh, okay so you are required to make the appropriate views and uh, you also need to uh, uh, obtain the true shape of the shaded surface right and for example in this case uh, the okay let me just take it okay so the object is given to be uh, like this and uh, you can make the the front looking in this direction okay so uh, you need to make the front view top view and whatever auxiliary view as you uh, as has already been shared with you in one of the videos that we circulated uh, in the month of april when we just started in the online mode a mode that was on how to obtain the true shape of a surface so in that video in the beginning uh, part you can see that there is a discussion on what are the different types of auxiliary views that we normally use so there are two types of auxiliary views one is auxiliary front view and another is auxiliary top view so auxiliary front view or auxiliary top view are the two primary auxiliary views which normally you will be making now in this case the uh, when you are dealing with such problems so you first uh, have to make the simple front and top view of the object as per given detail so in this case uh, <clears throat> so this is uh, 150 okay so that is 150 and then it is 50 up okay and then on this side you can go again 150 and uh, 50 and just join these two so that's the front view right and then the top view for the same object is like uh, <clears throat> 150 by 150 and that is so that's the top view right and uh, this shaded surface that we're talking about uh, that we're talking here is uh, actually shown as this line here right so this line actually shows the uh, the shaded surface, right? And just for the sake of uh, uh, understanding, I'm just naming it as, uh, say, let us name it as uh, A. Uh, I'm just going to put four vertices around this. This is A, B. And this is this is C. This is just for the for the demonstration purpose. Otherwise, if you are okay, you may not may not uh, you know write these uh, vertex vertex names. So that is uh, A. Say this is B. This is C and this is d right so uh, in the top view uh, i need to complete uh, <clears throat> uh, by offsetting this line through a distance of 50 on this side so that is my top view and sorry repeat offset this line on this side right and uh, the shaded surface is here right so this is the shaded surface and i can also uh, put these points here just for the sake of understanding this is a this is b this is c and this is d right so this is a routine thing that you can easily do because you already have done uh, you have already done a lot of problems on uh, uh, making the orthographic views 
so <clears throat> that is the routine part so you can make the front and top as per given details now comes the the, the next thing that i need to find out the true length or sorry the true shape of this surface which is abcd so basically abcd is a it looks like a rectangle so in while dealing with such problems uh, you need to do one thing the first thing you need to do is okay just let me write it here the first thing that you need to do is identify the view that contains the given surface as an edge so what does it mean so basically it means that whatever surface uh, the true shape of whatever surface we are interested in like in this case we are looking for true shape of surface abcd so out of these two views front view and top view which out of these two views contains the abcd surface as a line so in this case obviously the front view has surface abcd appearing as a line here right so uh, if you just wish to write we can okay we can just write it like this so this is uh, this point is c dash comma b dash you know uh, when there are two points so when you are making the front view looking from this direction when you are viewing at this object from this direction so point c will come first then will be point b just behind it so c is visible b is hidden and normally this is how we write visible point comma uh, hidden point okay similarly this point will be uh, while looking from uh, when you are making the front view it means you are sitting here so that means d is visible first then comes a so this point can be named as uh, a dash comma d dash right so that is the uh, front and the top view so the first step is that you identify uh, that view front or top whatever it is that contains the given surface as a line so that is the first step is so first step is done here uh, surface is here so front view is the, is the desired view okay next step is that you need to draw a reference line x1 y1 which is parallel to i am calling this this as edge view uh, i am calling this as this is the edge view of the surface right uh, this is edge view of the surface right so the next step is that you need to draw the uh, the reference please mute yourself okay so uh, in this case uh, uh, you will be now drawing the reference line x on y1 parallel to this now in autocad you can do it uh, let me just shift it slightly on the right side move it so that i have some space to work on so so that is my uh, two views okay now i need to draw x1 y1 how do i draw this one way is that i can just offset that is the easiest way so just give some value let us say offset it through uh, 300 or whatever it is so this this line is offset now i can change this line uh, i can change its color make it uh, uh, black and just for the sake of uh, you know I'm making it slightly different you can extend it by certain distance say 100 on this side and 100 on this side now there can be a question in our mind that why did we uh, make this line offset uh, with respect to this edge view on on the lower side why can't we do the same thing on the other side that is uh, i could have done uh, this offset on this side right the answer is no answer is no you you cannot make a new reference line on this side the reason being because we are working in the first quadrant system the first angle projection system in the first angle projection system if you remember that there are three elements one is observer object and the third one is the is the projection so in this case uh, if i am sitting here if i want to see this surface if i just want to see uh, this surface i need to sit on this side i cannot sit on on this side of the object i need to sit on this side so if observer is here observer object the projection is bound to come on this side right now if somehow somebody makes this projection uh, on, uh, on on this side on the top side by making x1 y1 here and then getting the projection on this side it means you are sitting here 
because for the first angle you have to make the observer sit here then this is the object and this this is the projection but if you are sitting here it means you cannot see the the desired surface directly because between you sitting here and the surface here lies the body of the object the volume which is opaque so you obviously when you are sitting here you can't see this surface right so to see the surface clearly you have to sit here this, so that is your place so this is the observer so observer is here if the observer is here object is here the projection has to come on this side so please don't uh, commit this mistake of making the reference line on the other side uh, keep in mind that we are following the first angle projection system okay fine now comes the uh, the the next step that is uh, making the uh, projections for all these four points to obtain the auxiliary top view and just for the sake of uh, understanding just let me make this line this line is obviously x y you all, all know that whenever we are making the front and top view so this line here uh, can be termed as uh, this is uh, line x y so that is capital x and uh, this is y okay this is y okay and uh, this line here that i've just drawn i can name it as x1 and uh, y1 so this is x1 and y1 right okay now uh, uh, you also have a freedom we didn't discuss it uh, in the initial phase that you can make this top view at whatever distance right so i don't know what distance i have taken so this distance i can just check it, it can be whatever value depending upon the space availability this distance is uh, 12.65 in this case it can be any any random value depending upon the space availability uh, with you on the screen right so this is 12.65 you can make it some uh, some round value also when you are making the top view but in my case i didn't take care so this is this is 12.65 whatever it may be it doesn't make any difference right so now i have to make the auxiliary top view in this case right because this is the this is the regular this is the regular top view this is the regular top view uh, and this is a regular front view right this is regular front view so whenever you are making any view which is derived from the front view the next view in sequence should not be it cannot be another front view so the the views will appear in in, in an uh, alternate sequence so this is top view this is front view and the next view that we are going to derive from the front view is going to be from the family of top view so we will call it as the new view that you, we are going to make here that will be called as auxiliary top view right so please keep in mind that we are now going to make the auxiliary top view right the auxiliary top view will give us the desired true shape of the surface abcd now how to do this uh, i'll just change my uh, layer here so i'm now working in the projection line mode so i'll just draw a line which should fall perpendicular to this x1 y1 i am starting a line from c dash b dash and i am making this line perpendicular to right click shift make it perpendicular to this line right now if you can see this line this is the line which is uh, the projection line drawn from this point now i am going to use the four vertices of the surface a b c d so b c uh, vertices uh, can be projected from here similarly i can also project a and d again make it uh, fall perpendicular to line x1 y1 right so make sure that these lines are perpendicular whether you are doing it manually or you are doing it in autocad make sure that this angle has to be 90 degree this is one of the gravest mistakes one can make in the auxiliary projection system uh, that this angle is not 90 degree this has to be 90 degree please take care of this mistake right okay now comes a tricky part a new part it's not uh, very complicated you can just have a look at it very carefully what i'm doing i'm going to use a, one command which is called lengthen l e n so once you type it it comes here this is a lengthen command 
So click on this lengthen command. So what this lengthen command will basically do, it will actually increase the length of the two projection lines, the blue color lines we have just drawn through certain distance, right? So now what is that distance? Lengthen, right click. So I want to lengthen the selected lines through certain delta distance. So that delta distance in this case is, I'm saying distance between B and this distance, perpendicular distance, uh, X, Y line. So distance of B in top view from X, Y line. This is the distance through which I want my uh, projection lines to be extended. So I'm just measuring this distance by clicking at B and clicking at X, Y line. So this distance is uh, recorded in the system. And once I click on this reference line, it means I'm saying that lengthen this line through the recorded distance. Now you can see this leg has been extended, right? Now, what is the distance of, uh, uh, basically what we have done is, I, okay, let me just make uh, a projection line here so that uh, you don't commit this mistake. So this is a uh, line from B and this is line from A, right? So basically what I have done is, I have taken this distance here, distance of B from XY, and I have transferred that distance here. So this, this, this line is actually coming from B dash. And this distance I have also taken for point B, right? So the point that I'm going to get here is termed as, uh, actually this should also be in small letters, my mistake. And because this is a top view, so normally top view is represented by lowercase alphabet. So you can please correct it. This is A, right? And this is small d. This is small d and this is small c right okay now i am uh, i have just translated uh, transferred this distance of small b from xy so i'm just going to copy and i'm going to name this point as since this is auxiliary top view so any point in top view is always represented with lowercase without any dash now to differentiate so ideally its name should be b and no dash on it so just to differentiate it from this b i'm just uh, going to add one uh, you know uh, uh, you know, subscript one. This this one goes here. So from uh, this button, you can just make it B one, right? So this point is B one. Same way. Now I do the same thing again. I just go to the lengthen command. This is a list of recently used commands. Lengthen again. Lengthen by how much? Right click delta through delta. What is the delta? Starting from A up to x y line right and extend so this I, I have recorded the distance of a from x y now the projection line for a dash is coming on x1 y1 here so i'm going to extend this line here so that is the extension of of this projection line and the point that i get here is <clears throat> that is a1 right so this point is a1 right now i can just go back to my uh, object line layer and i can just connect these two points here so that is a1 b1 right a1 b1 okay same treatment i have to give to c and d but the distance of c and d is different from that of b and a so distance of b and a was this much this small distance from xy this small distance from xy rather it was same right similarly the distance of c and d from xy is is uh, relatively large so uh, i need to extend the projection line coming from c falling on x1 y1 and I should locate point C1 along this line at a distance which is same as the distance of C from XY. So one way is that I in that I record the delta distance in lengthen command by clicking at C and clicking at this point on XY. So this delta I use to extend this line which is coming from C dash from uh, to, to extend this line from X1 Y1 to this location but I have already extended it through certain distance that is distance of B. So I can just save my time by uh, taking the lengthen command delta distance 
delta recorded is from c not up to x1 uh, sorry xy but let it be from b so basically uh, now this delta that is the difference of c to b is x, uh, is uh, transferred here so i have already uh, drawn this line to locate b1 i am extending this line by that distance right now you can just check uh, what is distance of c from this location x y so this is 162.65 right and what is the distance of b from x y this is 12.65 right this is just for record uh, for, for for just your checking now i go to align what is distance distance of b this is 12.65 so this distance and distance and this distance are same right so basically we have transferred this distance of b to locate this uh, this point b1 here right and uh, this point here that i've just uh, obtained this point is actually c this point is c and you can also check what is the distance of c1 from x1 y1 this is 162.5 so this distance here and this distance here they are same basically so you have to ensure these two things one the projections from a dash b dash c dash d dash that is these lines these lines should be 90 degree to x1 y1 this is the first important thing to be careful about and second you transfer the proper distances of the corresponding points to locate these points here as b1 and c1 right so this is something important in auxiliary if these two things are okay your question is okay right now by same logic you can uh, also extend this line for locating point d1 so repeat uh, lengthen uh, delta delta is from this location to a because i have already located a1 right and extend this line which is already having uh, a1 here so extend this line this right now you can see this point is this this point is uh, d1 right so this point is d1 and i can just complete uh, this uh, shape here so that is my true shape of abcd right so this is the desired true shape of the surface abcd right and you can write that this is the this is the true shape of you can just type in true shape here so that's the true shape that's the desired true shape right now how do we confirm this is the true shape you can look at this diagram now in your opinion uh, what is the true length of ad it is 150 because it is given to be 150 okay and mathematically which ideally you should not apply here but otherwise mathematically you can figure out what is the length of line cd the true length of line cd true length of line cd is equal to uh, basically uh, you can say this 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 distance this is uh, uh, 100 and uh, 100 this way right because this is 150 minus 50 so this becomes 100 and similarly 150 minus this 50 this becomes another 100 here so this is under root 200 so the length of this line is under root 200 right so that is uh, 140 uh, i think 141 right and that can also be confirmed from the uh, uh, from this line here this this should be just check it how much it is ah uh, yeah this is 141 right so in, in in this case the the line ad and bc are 150 each whereas line ab and cd are 141 so we can confirm we are saying this is the true shape so all the sides should be represented in their true lens okay now what is ad ad should be 150 see uh, sorry this is this is cd sorry this is cd so cd should be uh, 140 one point something cd this should be 141 cd or you can also call it as ab right so this is cd here and this is ab here so these two lines are represented in their uh, true lengths 
fine and then the other two lines that is bc and uh, ad these two lines are let us check their their length line do it very carefully from this point to this point this is 150 fine so uh, bc and ad are 150 each cd and b ab are 140 1.42 each so all the lines are represented in their respective true lengths so that is why this view is called the true shape of surface abcd so true shape uh, what is the definition of true shape true shape means when a surface which is bounded by certain uh, lines uh, is drawn in such a way that all the lines making its boundary they are simultaneously appearing in their true lengths so that surface is uh, the true shape of the uh, that gives the true shape of the surface right so in this case there are four sides all four are appearing in their true lengths simultaneously in one view so uh, this is the true shape of surface abcd right now uh, if you have any questions uh, you are free to ask yes please any doubts any questions सर यस सर दिस चीज का हम ऑब्जर्वरी व्यू बना रहे हैं हम्म उसका जैसे इसमें टॉप व्यू आपने अलग दिखाया कि हम इसका बना रहे हैं तो अगर मैन्युअली कर रहे हैं तो भी दिखाना जरूरी है कैन यू प्लीज कम अगेन व्हाट इज द क्वेश्चन अगर हम मैन्युअली बना रहे हैं तो जैसे आपने इस क्वेश्चन में टॉप व्यू में वो वो दिखाया है हाईलाइट कर रखा है ओके तो क्या अगर मैन्युअली बना रहे हैं तो भी हमको करना पड़ेगा सेम नहीं बेटा ये ऑल दिस ओके लेट मी जस्ट रिमूव द अनवांटेड थिंग्स इवन दिस कलर आई हैव जस्ट डन दिस जस्ट टू यू नो हेल्प यू इन अंडरस्टैंडिंग व्हाट वी आर डूइंग अदरवाइज दिस इज व्हाट इज एक्सपेक्टेड फ्रॉम यू ओके राइट नो शेडिंग नथिंग सो दैट इज व्हाट इज एक्सपेक्टेड फ्रॉम यू जस्ट ड्रॉ सिंपल फ्रंट व्यू सिंपल टॉप व्यू एंड ड्रॉ एक्स1 वाई1 राइट दिस एक्स1 वाई1 नीड्स टू बी ड्रॉन इन सच अ वे दैट it does not overlap with agar koi isko aise banayega na see a result will be same ye agar main isko aise bana dun ki ye sare ka sara jo hai i just uh, you know move it slightly and agar main is x1 y1 ko move karu yahan se aur isko yahan rakh dun if i keep it here so this entire thing that i have created ab a1 b1 c1 d1 that will be also be shifted here right but this will make the two views that is the observatory top view this one and this top view here the regular top view these two views will be overlapping this has to be avoided right so observatory view ke questions mein the most important thing is how do you manage the space right agar maan lijiye ye aap agar aap isko manually kar rahe ho if somebody is doing it manually and this is the sheet so you need to start making the front view and this top view by leaving सम एप्रोप्रिएट स्पेस ऑन लेफ्ट ऑफ इट अदरवाइज अगर आपने मान लीजिए आपकी शीट यहाँ ऐसे ना होके ऐसे होती अगर आपकी शीट ऐसे होती और आप इसको अपनी शीट पे ऐसे बनाना शुरू करते हो राइट वंस यू वंस यू हैव कंप्लीटेड फ्रंट एंड टॉप देन यू रियलाइज के ऑक्सरी टॉप भी बनाने के लिए मेरे पास जगह नहीं है शीट के ऊपर राइट सो प्लीज टेक केयर ऑफ दिस थिंग दैट प्लान फॉर द व्यूज इन एडवांस बिफोर यू स्टार्ट मेकिंग once you make it on your sheet then you should not uh, face this difficulty that oh i don't have space on this side because my sheet is ending it is i have just drawn it by mistake on the boundary of the sheet so please plan it accordingly well in advance that what all views you are going to make how much space is needed and where should i start making the front and top view so that i don't have any problem later for making the auxiliary views otherwise uh, i just need to uh, you know Uh, add something to uh, the same problem that we are discussing so that you can also handle problem number 2 this is what you need to do in problem number 1 this is your assignment number 1 right usme aapko sirf surface ka true shape banana that's it right jo problem number 2 hai that is also quite similar to problem number 1 but the only difference is that in that case you also need to take care of other uh you know points of the solid like in this case right now we are focusing only on a b c d but in that problem you also need to consider this vertex this vertex this vertex this vertex and even this vertex and even this hidden one right so that is your 
assignment number two. In assignment number two, you also need to take care of not only the points that make the inclined surface for which you are looking for the true shape, but you also need to take care of all other vertices on the solid, right? So that is the difference between point uh, assignment number one and assignment number two. So if this is okay, then we can proceed with that.